get out there outdoors is proud to represent the following. You can find them all on Facebook. Wall hangers. Display that European mountain pride. MWD Outdoors. Make them take a dirt nap. A to Z Game Calls. Specializing in custom slate calls. Prime 1 Camo. Be the Predator. Deer Tracks Plaques. For some top quality displays. How are you doing guys? Uh, Mickey Mass here with Get Out There Outdoors. Uh, this is going to be a, a video based on uh, the late part of October. Um, later October is when you know your your biggest pre-rut push is coming into play. Um, when we're working on trying to figure out the pattern of these bucks, why they're changing a little bit. This time of year, the bucks are kind of coming off the food a little bit more. Um, they're going to be working the scrape areas, the, the rub lines and stuff a little bit more. Uh, you'll actually see them working the scrapes and rubs a lot more during the daylight hours at this time period. Um, <clears throat> They're really starting to push on uh, dominance, as uh, you know. To th this is my breeding grounds, uh, kind of, kind of, kind of mentality. Um, this time of year, you're also going to notice that your scents, your calling, your rattling, uh, these kind of things are going to play a little bit bigger factor in the percentages. You know, um, this time of year, that kind of stuff works a lot better. You're going to see more results out of that kind of stuff this part of the year, uh, in my opinion, than any other part of the year period up to the pre-rut. Once you get into the rut, that's where a lot of people have their own kind of uh, variations and, and ideas as to what the the rut might portail. But for me, period is when the rut's actually whenever they're locked down with the girls. But pre-rut is when they're trying to figure out everything, trying to find out where those does are. They're coming into heat. Um, you know, that's when they're making their rounds a lot more. <clears throat> and they're a lot more aggressive. Um, Whenever I was talking about the calling and stuff being a lot more uh, effective this time of year, it still depends on the deer, okay? Uh, some of the older ones, if you're in an area that's got a lot of pressure, you know, they're going to be leery about someone out there blowing on that grunt tube too much, you know? Um, I personally, I'll, I might call, but it, it, when I do call, it's very soft still. You know, even though I, even though I do believe that the, at this time of year is whenever it's most effective, um, I'm still going to limit myself to, you know, not just rambling on, you know, out there just blowing into the wind, you know. Um, I really like to see the animal before I call. Um, I kind of like to know what they're paying attention to, looking at their body language. Uh, I have a buck coming in there to me, you know, he's 7 to 80 yards out, you know, and, and every step he takes, he's stopping, listening, you know. You know, listening for everything, kind of jumpy about a squirrel moving. You know, those kind of those kind of bucks. If I call to them, it's going to be at a last resort effort to where I know I'm not going to be in the thin range any other way, and I might do something very soft just to see if I get his attention. I'm definitely not going to get too loud with that guy uh, to run him off to where maybe he might circle back around. You know, a couple hours later, those bucks that are creeping through the woods. You know, are, are skittish. You know, you gotta you gotta be really careful with those guys. Um, get into the younger bucks. Uh, some of the older bucks are still like that, but uh, like this. But you know, some of the uh, younger bucks that come out in the woods, you know, and you see they're wide eyed, the ears are wide up in the air, head held high. Um, these kind of bucks are, you know, just like a just like a young teenager. You'll see, you know, the ones uh, walk into the bar, the peacock chest all puffed out. You know, those are the ones that are. Uh, more anxious, uh, more rambunctious, and, and more eager to, to pick a fight if they need to or want to, you know. Um, those guys are going to be very responsive to calling. Um, but still, with those, you have to be careful not to overcall. Um, you know, watch watch the body language when you call. If you have a buck come in like that and you give him a, if you give him a soft grunt, you know, if his ears move at all, he heard you. Okay, just just trust me on that. He heard you. Now you hear that you see them coming their ears up like this, you know, and they do that, and that ear goes down. Okay, if the ear goes down, the hair comes up on his back. He's coming in your way. You know, his ears go down and he's kind of walking on. Well, maybe you were too aggressive with that grunt. Uh, maybe you thought you made yourself sound a little bit too big or intimidating. 
uh, for that guy, and he's going to kind of cruise off out of the way. Or, you know, he's just going to cruise off all the way, circle around, come back into wind on you. I mean, there's variations there. But if you see his ears moving at all, try to pay attention to which way they're moving. You know, that's when using your glasses and stuff out there in the field come into, come into play really good. Uh, that's why I personally I make my own grunt tubes. Uh, I have a really small one that I can hold right inside my hand. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, if that buck, you know, starts to walk away from you after you've seen those ears drop, don't try to persist and get louder and louder. Excuse me. One thing you're noted. One thing you're going to do is you're going to educate that deer. Okay, this is exactly where I am. So if he does want to come around, he's going to know where you were grunting at, and he's going to try to get downwind of that. Okay. You can run a deer off. At the same time that you can call one in if you over call. Deer, I, I, I'm a firm believer that they are a lot like turkey when it comes to calling. You know, uh, if you got them coming in nice and easy on a certain low key cadence, no reason to get louder and more aggressive. You know, you're going to scare a bird. He's going to scare a bird off, same way you scare a, a buck off. Uh, since um, early or not early, but uh, late October. Uh, I think the scents and stuff really come into play a lot more effective this time of year than any other time of the year. Um, like I said, they're going around and checking the scrape areas a lot more um, and the rub lines and stuff a lot more, trying to do the pecking order, but they're also looking for that first doe. Uh, that first doe in the area, that magnum, you know, uh, the one that gets everything started for them. So, you know, with that said, you know, their noses are, are, are reaching out a lot harder that's time of year so make sure that your your scent isn't getting involved with that if you guys are laying down scent trails and drag lines that kind of thing try to do the best you can about you know making sure your boots and stuff are not going to leaving your scent behind uh, with that trail you know <clears throat> if you guys are hanging uh, wicks scent wicks and things like that try to hang them away from your location within range uh, you know, of, of whatever equipment you're using, whatever you feel comfortable with, but try not to hang him right on you, okay? Uh, that If that animal does pick up on that scent and keys it in, whether it could follow on that scent trail, where are you leading them? You're leading them directly to you, and you're, all eyes are on you, and you really don't want that. You kind of want that to be in your direction, but, you know, off of you a little bit to where if you move a little bit, they're not, they're not keyed right on you. Uh, well, anyway, guys, with that said, you know, with the the later October, you're leading in through that pre-rut stages. Uh, those are the kind of the things I look for uh, when I am hunting. If I am going to hunt over sign, that kind of stuff, this that's the time of year I do it. Um, bedding areas and stuff, they will still be in the bedding areas, you know, especially if it gets hot, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, they're still going to be working a little bit bed. Like I said, food's coming off the menu a little bit. They're still going to be doing that back and forth a little bit. You know, they're still... That's pretty much where those lines uh, that they're following are be running from, you know, from bed to food. But they're going to be spending a lot more time making the circle, you know, making the laps now. Uh, and you should start seeing those deer a lot more through the daylight hours. If you aren't, try some scents on a good scrape that you can get set up on, you know, where the wind is in your favor. Um, <clears throat> I've had some had some instances where I've had a buck uh, come into a certain scrape, you know, very religiously. Uh, big community scrapes, those are the ones I like to find, the ones about the size of a truck bed. Uh, but, you know, I had bucks coming in there all the time, just night, night, night. Start putting in my own scent, start putting my own scent. Well, he tries to figure out who is this buck, who, who, who you know, who's coming to visit. Pushes him to come through there a little bit sooner through the day to try to, you know, cover up his scent and that kind of thing. And able to bring him in through the daylight hours. Wasn't able to take him, but, but that works. Okay. Anyway, guys, if you guys have any comments, questions, or anything like that, something I may have missed, I'm kind of rambling on a little bit here. I'm um, we'll going to end this video now. But uh, later October, that's kind of the way I see it, kind of the, what I look for when I'm trying to pattern an animal um, this time of year. So if you guys would, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Catch the later videos that I'll be doing. I'll be going through the following months early and late, kind of divide them up a little bit, uh, and kind of with my, my thoughts and ideas and, and the things that I use uh, to pattern that whitetail. Alright guys, you'll have fun and get out there.